We're back. And we have a uh, diamonds in the house. Kojo, um, before the break, uh, I, I told the people that let's talk more about how things are now. I had you and why That's the general talk, you know. And even before we get there, earlier you had mentioned how people should take their time and ask questions. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's, let me stay on that for a minute before okay. we get to the general, okay. yeah. Um, people ask, we don't, we are not a uh, question asking That's true. culture, we don't have it. That's true. Hey. That's true. Yes, Rupo say, it's a bank, and I want to make a and say, you know. That's true. Uh, well, how, how? That's true. I mean, the, the, to the extent that <laughs> when I got into data bank at first, you see, I was going to say, I was going to say, I was going data bank. Just say, hey, we're going to data bank. Ceremony class and all that. But, I mean, maybe, let me drop down a bit to those who are not as sophisticated and may yeah. not, you know, know. The, the, the thing is, if you ask the company that is standing in front of you the questions, most likely, they'll give you the answer that you want to hear. Mm. What I will recommend, though, is they can ask, okay, oh company we cry, why in a shame or so? No, the banks, they will be on himself bank, Bank of Ghana. Who bet me a friend, Bank of Ghana cry, or who bet you a baby as a self offer? Hey, yeah, no, hey, Securities and Exchange Commission. You get it. So, if you cannot trust the person sitting in front of you, at least the regulator you can trust. Call the regulator or find out who the regulator is and call the regulator and ask the regulator, is this company good? Mm. Maybe the regulator won't say, yes, it's good, so that next time you come and say, oh, but you yeah, told me. Yeah. But the regulator will tell you or give you an indication whether this company has any complaints with them that they haven't resolved, whether this company is doing the right thing that it must do. So no matter where you are sitting, whether you are in the marketplace or you are you know, um, in some shop somewhere on the high street somewhere, you still have a phone. Everybody has a phone. Just pick the phone and call and ask. Not everybody can Google, but if you can Google to Google and check yourself. So that it's not only the person, the company that wants your money to invest your money that is sitting in front of you and talking. Then you too, you can check. Mm -hmm. You know, ask for uh, phone numbers and call and check. I mean, otherwise, I really don't know, I mean, how else, you mm -hmm. know, if you don't really understand. And when you call, by all means, somebody understands your local language. Triga away you know dagbani somebody will understand one of those languages and talk to you and let you understand because if you don't understand then you have to be careful mm. you really have to be careful okay yeah okay yeah so we move on now mm. to um now and investments like you said are so 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 important yes because you get to a time in life when you can't and money by working. Yeah. So you need to have invested so that somehow your investors are now, your investment your investments. is now generating income for yeah, you. Yeah. And what, how do we answer this question now? Because everybody say, na de me yeah. me nya, how can I deposit some and save some? Good, good. But KSM, you know, luckily I'm old enough to have been, you know, uh, I was old enough in 1983 to see what was happening in Ghana. And to be honest with you, since 1983, when we're eating yellow corn and kukunti, I've there's never been a year that I haven't heard that if we are seeing and it's hard oh, and I can't meet it. Let and meet since that farming time all the way down to today, it's the same chorus. So as for it's hard, life is hard, and what I I can I'm, I can get to eat, I haven't gotten, and why should I now think of investment? It will always be there with us. I can assure listeners, uh, viewers. I can assure you, it will always be hard. So no matter how hard it is, you have to develop a certain habit to ensure that you put something aside for that future. Because as for that future, I can assure you, it will come. Yeah. And you can't wait and think that, oh, my kids or something will happen and or I'll get a breakthrough or a deal. And in Ghana, we are... We have more Christians, don't we, than, mm. than any other. Mm. And I'll just use that and pick on a Christian uh, uh, principle to try and teach people why they can invest no matter what. And as Christians, they say we should tithe, isn't it? And we should tithe how much? 10% of whatever you earn. And I see a lot of Ghanaians strictly tithing without fail. Yeah. That should tell you something. That should tell you that 
no matter how hard it is, you are tightened. So no matter how hard it is, I believe you can invest. And I have a mantra that goes, if you can tight, then you can invest. Same 10% principle. It doesn't have to be much. People think that when it comes to investment, then it has to be big. Yeah. No. If it's 10% of 100 that you are tightening, you 10% of 100, you invest. And that's it. The rest, live within that uh, remaining 80 that you have. If your income increases to 150, increase the tight to whatever 10% of that is. And at the same time, increase the investment. It gets to a point where when you are not investing, you are not even feeling correct. Like, hey, this month, I haven't gone to invest. Mm -hmm. though. Just like you've gone to church and in Methodist, the Titan book is there. You know, it's strict. They will check, have you? The same way, get your investment book and tally it. Once you are tightening, you are investing. The same. I mean, it's just a principle I'm, I'm, I'm teaching here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you can apply it in any... So no matter how small you earn, there's absolutely no excuse. And you know, money is a very inelastic commodity. No matter how much you're earning, it's never enough. Mm. You always want mm. more. I mean, I always use Oprah Winfrey as an example. Mm. The woman is still working. Yeah. And she was, or is, or was the richest black woman in the world. Does she need to work? Really, let's think about it. Does she really, really need to? But she's working. Whether it's for money or it's for philanthropy or whatever it is, she's still earning money. So money will never be enough. It will never, never be enough. And if you keep pushing it and saying, oh, when I get more, the more you push it, the more now you will require mm. to put aside for that future. Because KSM, I always say, for those who think that their kids will come and look after them, when we were growing up, there was nothing called crash. I don't, I don't know about you, but you are much older than me. There was nothing called crash. Today, we have crash, 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 where you are in a hurry to go to work. You dump your, your child. Back in the day, the child is at home until they are about age six. Yeah. By the time we are growing old, old people's homes will become the new phenomenon. If you are not careful, your children will be so busy trying to make ends meet, they'll just dump you at some old people's home and, and check out and go. If you don't have your own means, you'll be very sorry for yourself. And I, I, so I don't think that times are hard is an excuse at all. Mm. It's not an mm. excuse. Mm. You've got mm. to get into mm. the habit of investing. Mm. Mm. Show some love. Now that's, 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 that's very, very true. And there's something about people not accepting that it gets to a point in life mm. that you can't make money. Oh, yeah. And this is a time when if you have invested, you realize the importance of what you have done, you know. But I think when people are growing up, young guys think, oh, we have time, we have time, we have true, time. True, true. You know. Especially, <laughs> and it is especially for those who work for themselves. Yeah. Especially. Most of us who are on a salary, sometimes we realize it's a bit quicker. Mm -hmm. But those who work for themselves, pharmacists, architects, quantity surveyors, I mean, those in construction, you know, most of them are like on their own. They are not in, in, their, in, in a firm and in a salary. Accountants, ex entrepreneurs, those who are working on their own, they always think they can work all the way till they are maybe 80 or you know because you see a few examples but those are outliers those are not the norm yeah and they use outliers to, to, to you know to convince themselves that yeah. oh yeah this but it's not it's not right they they need to also you know put something aside because one day you will not be strong enough mm. to be able to to do what it is that you are doing i mean at 60 you are still strong you are going 65 you're still you're going you're going strong I, I, from my experience, when you hit 70, things begin to, you know, you, you, you slow down. No yeah. matter what you do, yeah. you slow down. And, and new ideas will be coming, new blood will be coming, the young, young ones are coming with new technology, and you can't keep up. So keep up, yeah. while you are, you know, strong and going, pay yourself a salary. Entrepreneurs find it very difficult to pay themselves a salary and put things aside and behave. They, they, they just go with the flow as and when. I'm not one, so maybe it's easier for me to say. But uh, those, those working on their own, they are the most vulnerable. And they need to really sit up and put things aside for, for, for when they retire. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Let's talk about this culture of putting things aside. aside yeah. Getting people to understand that it needs to be done. Is there a way, can you say we, within our educational system... Yeah. This can be fed into it so that as you're growing up, as you're just going through schooling, part of the education is making you understand 
that this should be a habit. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I've had arguments where even courses like entrepreneurship should be made um, standard, like uh, like maths and English. You know, in school you have to pass maths, English, basic science. We can add entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. and in that in that space. We bring the investment um, education in there. It has to be done, even if it's not done at the basic school. If it's, it's not done at basic school, at least from SSS or SHS, it has to be introduced. So that by the time you're getting into the university, it's been inculcated in you. It has to go through the educational system because that is where you can catch everybody. Because once we leave the educational system, some will go into formal uh, employment. But a lot more, 70% of our population is in the informal sector. Even if you end up to be in a remote place doing something else, you would have gone through school at some point in time. So if it is imbibed into our curriculum, that would be, for me, the best thing mm, that would happen to mm, this country. Mm, it has mm. to be a, a, a core subject. Yeah, that's what they yeah, call it. It has yeah. to be a core subject. Mm -hmm. Maths, English, general science, entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. It has to be there. And then in the curriculum, you bring in the investment uh, tips, the tools. I mean, we can all, you know, help develop it. Right now, as it is, we kind of go out on our own. We mm -hmm. go to the tertiary institutions, mm -hmm. and then we are teaching um, investment and mm -hmm. career counseling, mm -hmm. and we're doing it. But it's not on such a, on the on the skill that yeah. is, is required. There's a yeah. limit to which we we can do it. And if it is inculcated in the curriculum, then it cuts across the whole country mm. in one fell swoop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so generally, um, do you think, as institutions like yours, yeah. you can you can lobby the education minister or government, uh, whatever, whoever needs to be lobbied so that this can be included in the curriculum? Yes, yes, we can. I mean, um, it, it's been tried. I mean, uh, it's been tried. Some schools already have it, mm. you know, as, but it's not a core subject. But yeah. uh, quite a number of schools have it as part of their curriculum so that they, they build. But sometimes you, you get drowned with all the other you know problems that the education sector has you know um, like today if you are to go into the education uh, ministry to go and try and discuss this yeah. that's not yeah. what is going to be their priority that's they right. have that's double right. track green track yes, blue yes. track going on that's you right. know all sorts of <laughs> things are going on so there's, it's a big wahala <laughs> for them but yes it's something that we yeah. can do it's something that we should you know keep at it we haven't given up on it it's something that we can really keep pushing mm. and pushing. And mm. while we go around, I've noticed that some schools are picking it up, even as it's at SHS level. Even though um, you can't invest on your own until you're 18, because so if you're not 18, it has to be done in trust for. We have schools where the, the school itself organizes as the trustee for the students, mm. and then they help the students to you know, start the investment. But it's not on a huge scale. But yeah, we have schools in Tamale that we, we, we've been able to get through in Kumase, in Takrade, you know, and in a few places. But I would have wished that yeah. it was much, much bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, it, Kumase, the other day we were in St. Louis and it was amazing how the, the woman there organized the ladies and, and made sure that they were all invested. I was very impressed. Yeah. Because yeah. what I noticed, you know, the few times I've been on rounds yeah. and um, Data Bank was present was the, the reaction to, from students yes. when they hear, when they're exposed to this kind of information yes, yes. and how eager they are yes. to start up something. They are very, very yeah. eager. It's, it's it very, very eager and it sometimes overwhelms us. We are not even able to you know, meet the immediate mm -hmm. demand. Mm -hmm. There's always an immediate demand. The challenge is after you've left and you've gone and the euphoria is gone and the passion is gone, yeah. then yeah. it starts you know, yeah. waning. So yeah. we need a yeah. way to keep it, you know, to sustain it. And, and if we can sustain it through the curriculum, I think that that would, that would really work. Mm. And we won't give up. Uh, we, we, we'll, we'll get back to, to the education. In fact, it's, it's more of a GES issue than the, than the ministry issue. It's, it's, it's the Ghana Education Service that we need to tackle because mm -hmm. they, I think, are responsible for, for the curriculum and developing mm -hmm. what it is that they develop. And one, 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 one uh, other area that yeah. we could think of, because they are so powerful, churches, yeah. I don't know whether there's a system to get them to let their congregations understand how relevant this is so that as they collect their tithe, they can also set up something <laughs> that people can do unless they think that it will be competing with the tithe. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know, but then they could be very influential. I, 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 must, I must say that some churches have been very welcoming. Mm, some of mm. we, we've, we've been to several churches. Some are extremely welcoming. In fact, they actually invite us um, to other programs that they may be holding, maybe mm. a women's thing or a men's thing here. They are very, some are very, very welcoming. Fantastic. Others do say, you know, the moment we bring you in, because we have so many people demanding that they want to come and do a presentation, the moment we open the door for you, it means we are opening it for, for everybody, everybody yes. and yes. they seem not to be able to handle that, that, that bit. But there are other ways we go around it, you know. So if you are not even opening the whole church to us, there are societies within each church that we are able to, you know, reach out. So yes, churches are a very, very powerful avenue um, for, for doing this kind of thing. And we are able to, you know, um, educate, especially the, the youth wings. I've been to, I can't, I can't count, about several youth meetings mm -hmm. where, mm -hmm. you know, on a Sunday afternoon, three o'clock, friends will invite me to just come and talk to the, 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 the young ones there about the investments and what they can do and what they can not do and where not to be greedy. And, you know, sometimes greed also comes in, in, into, into play. So, yeah, we, we, we go into the churches, but it's not every church that is, yeah. has been able, yeah. you know, to welcome us. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Now, let's, let's get back to your sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Formula One. Yeah, yeah. When okay, I heard yeah. you were a Formula <laughs> One addict, and what was that? Tell me the story about who tweeted what that, that became <laughs> sensational. So, so um, okay, we have a very strong Formula One group in Ghana. People don't know. We, we, we are quite a number of people who gather to, to watch Formula One. We have a WhatsApp platform. And so we go from place to place, you know, to, to watch the race. So Labadi Beach Hotel, DSTV Showroom, um, Star Bar. It's, I, I'm sorry, I maybe I'm advertising for them, but um, mm -hmm. La Race. We, we go to different places to watch. And there was this race a, in August. I think we watched it um, at the DSTV Showroom where we were, you know, Hamilton was not on pole. I, I, and forgive me if I'm using some terms, but <laughs> it was not on pole. Um, I, <laughs> I think Leclerc was on pole or something. Ferrari were on pole. Mercedes were not on pole. I'm a Mercedes fan. And we're hoping that uh, Louise will, will do an overtaking, you know, during the course on of the race. Means, on pole means, on pole means that at the start of the race, you are in front. You know, 20, 20 cars or 22 cars, they are arranged, you know, first, second, third, depending on your qualifying. Okay. But if you are the first, it means that you are on pole. Okay. So you are in pole okay. position. So that 10 pole position actually is coined from Formula 1, where you, it means you are, you are the front runner. And normally... If you are the one starting at front, it is expected that you will win. But depending on strategy, fuel, tire situation, rain, track temperature, well. you know, where all those things come into play. Very minute microseconds. And Hamilton did the overtake. And it was so, it was amazing. And we screamed and we were shouting. And we didn't know somebody was actually videoing us. Yeah. Videoed us, put it on Instagram, put it on Twitter. And... Lewis Hamilton picked it up. Wow. Uh, uh, amazing. Wow. Lewis Hamilton picked it up and tweeted back and said, wow. He didn't know that he had fans all the way in Ghana. <laughs> you know, and, and he, he did promise that one day he, he would come, come, he to would come to Ghana. But that thing went viral. Um, I was there. My bald head was right there <laughs> in, in the video. And, and um, it, it just went viral. I'm, I'm told now it's had millions of views already you know it's wow. it's, it's amazing that ghana yeah. is on the formula one map but we do go we have a group that go i i've been uh, to a couple of races singapore a couple of times malaysia i've been there i was in abu dhabi um uh, uh, two years ago not last year last year i couldn't afford to travel but I if you plan and you take your time and, and you think about it and you prepare towards it you, you can go and Hey, when, when you are in the truck, it's never like watching it on TV and, and the way that the engines are vroom, <laughs> vroom, and the speed at which they are, they are going. But yeah, we are quite a well-organized uh, group. Kwabna Poku leads um, the, the group and makes sure that uh, we are all organized. And we are trying to bring a Formula One car into, into, into our to car. Ghana. Yeah, we're working to with, you know, Renault um, has engines in some of the car. Mercedes yeah. also has engines. Yeah. So we're working with you know, Renault here. We're working with Mercedes to try and bring a Formula One car into Ghana. That, that will be the day. Wow. Th that will be the day. Wow. Unfortunately, there's no truck in Africa that hosts a Formula One. Really? Not in South Africa? Yeah, we are told South Africa is working on it. And it's possible that they can do a street race. I mean, Singapore is a street race. 
Um, there are a few street. Monaco is a street race, um, which means that you don't need to have a stadium with tracks. So you can cordon off, you know, a certain so, area. Yeah. So like in, in, in Ghana, we can decide that from Adenta on a race day, we block that road. So from Adenta all the way maybe to Tetakwashi and turn round, you know, and then do stands on the side. And that's your racetrack. And for that day in Singapore, the whole weekend is locked down. There are certain roads you can't access. And, and we watch the race and it's fun. It's, it's real fun, I mean. Just <laughs> yeah, I, I have to invite you back. Yeah. All we do is sports. We will. <laughs> no, that <laughs> one. You, I, do, you I, talk I, everything I sports. I can talk almost everything. Everything I can, sports. I'll talk football. I'll talk tennis. I'll talk cricket. I'll, yes. Yeah, cricket. I mean, I had some encounter with some Indians. They, they just, they were blown that me west african who just thinks of football i spoke cricket yeah. with them you know I, I can't talk what i can't talk though is american football yeah that one charlie <laughs> I, I i haven't i haven't really gone in yeah. you know deep but yeah you know anything table tennis i play squash four so, times so a, definitely yeah because it's we'll getting more and more exciting we'll do it. but we we, we can't break into sports because you can't get for data <laughs> yeah. we'll bring him back for sports yeah right? yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Well, thank you so much for joining pleasure. us and um, it's a pleasure. we have just like a minute your mm. final words to those watching about 2020 yeah how they can get a go invest you invest know with, um, it, 20, and in, it being an election year i know there's a lot of nervousness people uncertainty i just want to reassure people that look you don't need to be nervous you don't need to be you know so uncertain you don't need to put your money under your pillow you don't you just just it's a normal year you know just make sure that you are dealing with the, with the right firm and 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 invest because this year will come and pass and nothing is going to happen there i mean unless the world comes to a halt but ghana has seen what this is our probably seventh election or something that we are going into we've seen several of them it's a peaceful country yes the skirmishes happen here and there but life will go on you know don't allow anybody to scare you unnecessarily just do what you've got to do because life will still go on Life will go on, and um, um, thank you so much, Kojo, for joining yes, us. And um, always a pleasure. I look forward to having you back. We are going to talk sports. We will. Man. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> Trust me. It's, I, I, I can't just wake up in the morning. And I know. I can't wait to get it here. <laughs> so, so stick yeah. around, folks. We'll come back with him later to talk sports. But in the meantime, please think money and think investments, and stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> The KSM Show.